right, so we are live. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. Today I thought it would kind of be neat to do a chicken. Um, I've been hearing a lot of the groups around that are starting to get back into chickens again. And I have always loved chickens and I haven't done one, so I thought, why not give one a try? So I have this uh, cute chicken. Uh, there is a printable for it, uh, for members, and if you want to become a member, it's $2.99 Canadian a month. So you get all of the traceables and uh, any downloads of uh, eco prints that I've done. Um, and you just have to look back in the posts. There's three levels, so if you want to check the link in the description below, or if you see just below the screen, there's a join button. That'll take you to a video um, telling you all about what each level is. So if you want to paint along, that would be great. Uh, this looks harder than it really is. I've just uh, done mine on tracing paper and it'll go on this file folder just perfect. You can put it on a canvas, you can put it on anything you want. It's going to be done in acrylic and there, it's a minimal palette so raw sienna, burnt sienna, raw umber, burnt umber, red, green, ochre, cream, white, that's about it, and a black. And as far as brushes, uh, there'll be a little bit of uh, wisps as far as for the feathers are concerned. So I'm going to probably use a rake or you could use a fan brush. Um, a grainer is another name for some of these brushes. Uh, this is a rake here. So as you can see, it has uneven bristles. You could also use a hog bristle brush that's kind of scruffy. Uh, let's see what else I got here. Yeah, This is a Princeton Velvet Touch Filbert grain grainer. So again, it's uh, got some uneven bristles. And they make great feathers, fur, hair, that type of thing. Um, or, like I said, you can also use a fan brush. Um, I would get something a little bit stiff so that it separates. So, let's see. I should have one in here somewhere. Well, actually, I have one of these. This is a specialty um, fan. So you want something that will separate. Not sure where I put all my fan brushes. I have a, pun a bunch of them. Uh, this, this one would work also. Uh, bristled. Any, any bristled brush, would, fan brush will do. I don't see mine right now. Strange. Uh, see how it's kind of splayed apart and it's uh, rough. This is a hog bristle. So, hi Janet. Cassandra, hello. Good to see you. So I prepped this with a bit of gesso. Now there's marks on it, but we are going to paint this out in a um, sienna burnt orange type of color first just to do a background on it. So I'm probably going to use this one here is burnt sienna. I want something uh, that's going to be similar to the color of the chicken. And 
I'll mix a little bit of raw sienna with that, I think. We'll see what color we can get. I'm mixing my paints that I've been using craft and artist grade. I just want to use up odds and sods, so maybe maybe a little red. And for the background, you want to use a fairly big brush. Now I did put um, wax paper on the back of this so it doesn't wreck that painting. Hey Kimberly! So this one's going to be fairly easy. It's not. It looks difficult, but it's not. So I'm going to mix here, just a nice color, I've got a bristle brush here, and I'm going to go, I want it kind of scratchy looking. I did put water in my brush, just so that it would flow a little bit easier. giving it a faux uh, wood look, I guess you could say. So I'm mixing these three colors together. So each time I do that, it's going to be just a tad different in color, and that's fine. And I want it to be... Um, I want the brush marks to show, I guess I could say. And that's pretty well all I want to do to this. And then just give it a really good dry. So how's everybody doing? We're having a beautiful week this week. Nice, cool temperatures, not too cold and not too hot. Around 20 Celsius here. Awesome, Janet. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is, I've got my tracing paper here, so you can download your printable, it's on the community page for the members, if you want to, I like doing it on a tracing paper, because if I want to reverse it, I can. See if it goes on gray first. So I have gray or white tracing paper here. We'll see if it, what shows up the best. And I want to tape it in place just in case I have to redo something. So next month, October already, guys. October. Can't believe it. Um, 
I'm gonna do not necessarily Halloween, but I think I'll I want to paint some scarecrows, and I definitely want to be doing some fairies. It's kind of fairies hiding in the woods type of thing. I think that that would be fun. And I want something that I can see. Point pen. This one's got paint on it. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> the green one, I guess. Does that work? Yeah. So I want to put in my. Um, pattern. Let's see if it yep. should be okay. showing. Uh, you know that's going to be cool. <laughs> well, that's not working either. I got a bunch of dud pens. They only last for so long. That's why you really should use what you got. Or it just doesn't like tracing paper, I think. Which is strange. So this chicken is going to be sitting in a box. And it's kind of like a produce, the old time produce boxes. So what's everybody doing for creativity this week? I'll show you what we did in the members class this week or this month. I really enjoyed it. Uh, also, I will be showing how you can make your own rub-ons. It's not necessarily a true rub-on, but it's as close as you can get. <laughs> um, I am working out a few um, things with it though, uh, just printer-wise. You have to have a settings done just so for it. I'm just working on it. I'll show you what I did do and I will uh, leave you a link where I saw it. His name is uh, Yates Makes, I think it's called, his channel. He's fairly new. He's uh, from the UK, but he's oh, an awesome artist. He has a lot of really cool printing ideas and um, lithographs and stuff like that. I'll uh, list his channel when I'm finished streaming. Uh, I believe um, Devin Rex actually uh, did a video about that too. I 
Now there are many ways of doing it too. Like there is a, uh, now I don't know if they still have it. They used to have it, Golden. Used to have a, oh, let's see if, the, if I still have it. It was a liquid that you could pour onto your uh, paper, I believe. I haven't done it for so long. I'll have to experiment. <laughs> and you could print on it and then peel that off and use it. I wonder if I should do the rest in, I think I'll do the rest in white, because I don't think you guys can see this. I can see it, but I don't think you will be able to see it. So I'll put the rest in white. You know that's called oh, scarecrow. Oh, scare! Yeah, I love scarecrows and fairies. <laughs> we could do probably a little storybook. That would be cool. How this fairies had to save the scarecrow. That he wasn't such a bad guy. And I'm just going to put the, I'm not going to put the actual uh, thickness in. I'm just going to put a bunch of lines in here because I know what that is. So it's just a bunch of um, hay or straw in there. So just indicate where that is. It's good enough for me. And then let's see how this is working. Yep. And then the feathers just scribbles so you see um, the direction of them. Because you can keep your your um, printable to refer to if you. Um, get mixed up or it didn't turn out or whatever or maybe you need to redraw a section because you painted over it these are a certain shape I'll show you my book when I'm done this. It's It really turned out cool. Maybe we'll do a book with fairies in it. 
That might be cool. Storybook. This is his crown, or her crown, I should be saying. and her whatever this thing is called I don't know <laughs> all right I think that should be good enough Here's the printout. So that's what it looks like. Oh, I didn't put nature's own. Oh, I can put that on later. I'd paint over it anyway, so. Now, if you, I was thinking you could probably just put this on your page anyways, if you wanted to paint over it with this. But you do need to have um, the background on first, so no point. All right. So we'll start off with the box first. So the box is going to be um, pretty much almost the same color as this. So I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is um, have this streaks coming this way instead. So I think I'll use the same brush. So it's the same um, color palette that I'm going to be using. So eh, actually this looks pretty good, but I can just put a little bit more on there, I think. Just a little darker. Right in there. I'm mixing just a little bit of red with that. darkening it up. A little bit darker on the bottom. And then I'm going to get a smaller brush. Let's see. I want something a little bit stiffer. That's fairly smooth. Brush, bristle brush would be best. Find one. Oh, there's one. So just a bristle brush. I'm going to take a little bit of this um, light ivory. Hi, Sherry. Just going to make a little bit of a lighter color 
just a smidgen than what I got. And just at the very top here, I can put the different um, straw pieces and feathers after so don't worry about it too much about covering that up that's why you've got your printout so you can redraw it if you feel you would rather do that I just like to have a reference more or less and a little bit here it goes to there's the corner there and then it goes across here. And it, you just, uh, just put a little bit along the edge. A dark color just to give it a little bit of look of wear and tear. It's always good. That. And with these down here, it's going to be more um, glazes than uh, actual full paint. So I want to get a softer brush. When you're doing a glaze, you need a softer brush for that. Um, I think I'll use, should I use this one or a I think I'll use this one. I like a angled brush. And now I want to put in, there's these little triangles that are the wood sets. Um, now I, I want a little bit of a darker color to add to this, which would be the um, raw umber. I'll just put a dab over here to pick up from. And I just want a little bit of raw umber with that. Just to darken it up a bit. And then you want to paint in these little diamonds with that color. If some of the uh, base color shows through, don't worry about it, that's fine just a glaze more or less just to darken the area you could use a whatever brush you're you feel comfortable with if you want to use a round, use a round. Oh, like I was saying, I got off track here. Um, the rub-ons, I'll show you when I'm done this. It's really cool. I'll show you what I've done with it. And if I can uh, figure out the print, the print settings for this, um, I'll do another video about it. But I, right now I have two pieces that I'll show you how to do it with. 
um, one's a little bit blotchy because of my settings weren't correct, but it'll give you the, the um, basics of what it does. And I did a video, oh gosh, years and years and years ago, using an inkjet printer, and I believe it was wax paper. And it worked. The only thing with that is that you, you can't store it because it'll rub off. All right, and then just along the bottom here, you want just a bit of that color because it's a box. It's got a rolled quarter round on the bottom. Piece of wood. It's an old box, so it's going to have all kinds of marks on it. It's going to be very scruffy looking. After all, it's chicken laying its eggs in there. And just put a little bit on the bottom of it, too this dark color just to darken underneath where that would be it would be darker darker under here and just bring it out you do want it fairly dark right against the box though that's the shadow. And then a little bit on that quarter inch round, just at the top where the it meets the other piece of wood. It's going to be dark. And down here, where they meet, it's an old box, it has lots of character. A little bit of white to your brush, I didn't clean my brush. You can just add a little bit of marks, dry brush, on there. makes it look worn when you do that. A little bit of umber, darken up some areas maybe. Probably had all kinds of watermarks on it. Think this. And a little bit darker on the corners here where it would be collecting water or this is an apple crate so 
would be old. And then I take some more of that umber color again, just across this part, darken it. Same with this. I forgot to do that one. And those little uh, triangles. All right, I'm going to take um, this grainer brush, get some of that dark umber, and I'm just going to do some streaks on it. To make it look a little bit older. Same here, some of that umber, just go across well, the direction of, of the um, grain that you've put down. On the top here, a little bit darker. You can add a little white to it if you want. And I'm going to add some more umber on just the very edge of this, just to darken it. I think it needs it darker. Wear and tear. So you don't have to be precise with this type of wood because it's worn and torn and A lot of this will be covered anyways once we start putting the hot the straw and all that in here well, there's a little area right here that's dark that's the box on the other side but you only see a corner of it so that's all I'm going to do there brush. I want this area here to be a little bit darker. So I add some water to my brush. I'm just glazing a little bit there. And then just take that and then just put some lines in that top part. Just to scruff it up a bit. And a little bit of dark on the opposite side. So it's not crisp and clean looking, it shouldn't be. Dry brush it a little bit even. So 
we'll leave that to dry a bit and we'll start putting in our chicken here. Now the chicken is going to be more of a sienna color, I guess you could say, but a, with a little bit of um, mm, ochre in it. I don't want it. To, I don't want it the same color as this. I want a little bit on the orangey side. So I'm going to put some ochre in with the sienna color. If I can get it out, it might be bad. It's not the best, but it's going to have to do. And I'm going to use a rough brush again. So I want to mix these two to get a nice color. Might have to add a little bit of red to it. Let's see. Dark enough. We'll see. Yeah, I like boxes. So I'm just gonna, yep, that'll do. I don't want to paint her. Um, what do you call it? I don't know what these things are called. The thing around their neck. What is it? Uh, I don't have to go into the uh, this part, bottom part, along the edge because the straw will be there. Uh, gizzard? No, that's the inside. <laughs> um, can't think of the name. Hmm. Huh. So it's very, very, uh, if there's streaking in it, that's fine. Don't worry about it. It just adds more texture to the feathers. I'm kind of going in a swirling pattern anyways. So if it does show up as, uh, there's a little bit there. Mm. Never had chickens. No, I had chickens in our first house. I don't remember what they're called. Um, we can put some in the tail too, because we'll go over top with another color. Um, but I want the the very top of each of these feathers to be left, because they're going to be a different color. And I want to see where where they are, but they can be that color. Okay, so we'll let that now with the we'll let that dry, and we'll come back to this now that that's dry. And we'll do the apples. So we've got some apples in the corner here. And these aren't going to be really detailed. So you can get a small brush and a little bit more red in the mix. So um, I'm going to take some of that mixture. I don't want it really deep red. 
I'm just going to put a base coat over top. And then I can still see through it. I need my reference. So this is basically a glaze almost. It's very, very light. And just one here. And we'll put other colors on top, give it dimension. So we're just base coating it. And one over here. This one, or half a one. Darken that a little bit. green and I'm just going to use uh, I have avocado green here this is a very simple one so I'm not getting really detailed it's more about the chicken so I'm going to put a base coat of this emerald green on you can use whatever brush you want And let's see, where else? This one. And I will put a little bit of highlighting shadow in there also. I think that one I had there. And so hard seeing where all these were. So this is just basically a base coat and then you can put all your different highlights and shadows in afterwards. And this side, this 
one there. And you could probably use your Posca too, if you want to use a Posca. There's no real wrong way of doing this. Just experiment. And if you're doing this for a gift or something like that, it's always good to do one or two just to practice before you make the uh, gift. That's what I do. I missed a couple little gad thingies, triangles. Right there. Okay, so now I can just add a little bit of either yellow, so I have this ochre color here. And if it's thin enough, you can just put a glaze. Sometimes that's all you need. water. And add a little bit of white to that, or cream, and then you can put the little highlights in. And then just soften it out. Same here, bit of yellow. And then a little bit of a, a umber to that green will darken it. And we'll add some shadows in the leaves here. So the shadows will be kind of in the bottom areas. Let's see if that's going to be dark enough or not. And you can just add a little bit of stem or veining. Or anywhere they're overlapped. Let's see, one, two.
I'm not going to get too detailed with these ones, but just kind of show them where they are. Can make them as detailed as you want. You could go in with colored pencil and, and do a bunch of shading on them if you wanted to. And then a little bit of um, lighter color with that green to lighten it up. And then you can do highlights. So let's see, a little bit of a turn up. On the edge. I think I might get a posket. These are so small or possibly a even colored pencil would work. You want me to bring you guys in more? Let's kind of fire up there. A little closer, see what I'm doing? All right, let's put in, let's dry that first, and then I think I'm going to use some mm, Posca or colored pencil. We can add a little bit of, um, let's see, nice green. That might work. Just get a little bit more veining in the veins of the leaves. Just a bit, not, not a whole lot, but just to show. It's always nice to have a little bit of detail, not a lot, but show where the veins are, the main veins at least. Put a little bit in.
is actually a stem. That goes there. Uh, stem here. I forgot to put in. Okay, I'll dry that. I'm gonna take a yellow. Just do a little more yellow around here. Very lightly. And a little bit of red. Let's try putting red in paint. Let's dry it and then I'm going to use a little bit of pasta. For the stems. Let's see if I can get it. I can find a color that would be good enough. Or blue. This one is pretty bright. Might not have. No, not not the right color. So back to the crayons. That's not really going on that well, but I 
that. And it's brown underneath for shading. I know I'm getting kind of fussy here, but bit of shading on the bottom. This is a brown. But it will make a difference. Just light touch. That's all you need. Right there. Just putting a shadow in these leaves from how the uh, shadow would be cast by the apple. And if one leaf is over top of another, it's, you could put that in there too as a shadow. There's a curl, there might be a shadow in part of that. The stem. There's a shadow on the, this one. Wherever the Stem meets the apple, it'll be darker area too. Like that. Or if you see the bottom. There. And I could use your colored pencil to a little bit more to the those triangles if they're not dark enough just use your colored pencils a lot of times that's all you need if they're not shadowed enough no not completely color them in. I'm just scribbling really. A little more line there. Bit dark in here. Meat. 
just have to play with it until you, you think it looks right. If you like it the way it is, then that's great. I'm going to put a few little dark areas in the wood too, just to mark it up a little bit. Maybe it's old. Well, it is old. A little darker. Oh, I forgot to do this guy here. Darker. Hey, Kathy. Uh, this drawing is in the uh, membership if you want to do it. Okay, let's play with this chicken then. All right, so the, the idea is to layers and you're going to use either a bristle brush something stiff or if you have uh, something like this where there's a lot of um, separation in the bristles you want something um, let's see oh, this one's a bigger one and we're going to do layers so we've already based this one so now that was this color here that we made up so I want to add some white to the, or not white and cream was it buff and you want a fair amount of water in your brush when you do this not dripping but you want it to flow off of your brush fairly easily so you kind of have to play with it a bit. If you want to practice on a separate piece, you can do that. And then you just follow the lines of your um, feathers. So look on your Just lost my oh there it is so look at your drawing and that will show you how your feathers are going and it's a matter of layers you can have long ones you can have short ones you can have more gold in it if you wanted to I'm gonna put a little bit of ochre with that And you just use your brush. We can go over it as many times as you want. Usually um, the more you go over it, the better it looks. So you just keep changing up the color and that gives it depth.
here. So each time I added maybe a little bit of something else, a little white maybe, or a little more uh, raw sienna. color I want it pure so I'll show you the um, what I did with printables after I'm done this or not printables the uh, rub on. Okay, and a little bit more white. Over here on the back. I'm just slightly, slightly touching the canvas. It's not it's very, very light. I'm not pressing down much. The pressure is very light. Above her eye, there is some. And right up in here, lighter. I'm going to take that raw umber color and start putting some of that in the tail. Just a little bit darker. Darker. 
her number. work or not. Paint's just on the verge of not being right. I think I'm gonna add I think I'm gonna add some Payne's gray to this a bit. Let's see. Her black green should do. I'm gonna give her A little bit of black. Mix with that. Yeah. Water. I'm going to dry that. Okay, so now I want some just plain what is this light ivory. So you make it however you want yours to go. And just a few more of these. Just 
picking. Add a few in the this area. Now I'm going to put a few, um, make some straw. So the straw, I'm going to use probably a round. And the straw I want on the ochre side, so I have some ochre out here. I'm going to mix a little of this black green with it. And just, you want it fairly thick, because you want a thick application. So I'm just throwing a bunch of it in. You can change up the value if you want. And again, it's like um, everything else. You can change up the color by adding a little bit of that cream color to it. Don't make them all the same color. And then we'll, we can add some more of the uh, feathers over top of that when we're done. And darker, you can put brown with it, or you want to stay away from the reds because that's your chicken color. But you could put other colors in it, more on the greeny side if you want, make it darker. Gold. Or Poscas. You could use Poscas. Hey, Pauline. I'll be doing the, um, I'll show you the uh, rub ons in a minute. Just having problems with my printer.
little bit of highlights ones here and there. So different colors of hay. Take some of this umber. Just throw it over top of some of these for her feathers. Yeah, let's do her, I don't know, what's it called, a waddle? <laughs> I don't know. So I want that red, and I'm going to mix it over here. So I'm going to mix it with that raw sienna to darken it a little bit. And let's see. Just going to put a base coat in. She has like multi-layered, whatever they are, wattles, I don't know. This is just a round brush I'm using, number five. And there. I'm not too worried about if it's uh, a little bit see-through. Sometimes with this part, it actually... Oh, shoot. I'm not even in picture. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry. And then the eye we can do... Gonna do it black, and then we'll use colored pencils to do all the details. And a little 
little bit of black to that red to make it more of a burgundy color. And put it in here. It's fairly dark right in here. And here it's dark. goes down into her beak a little bit and beak is kind of that color actually and then beigey So we'll dry that and then I'm going to get out my colored pencils. have a little bit of actually see, I'm gonna see if I can take this white off yep I can that was just the um, tracing there's actually a little bit See that back here, mm, right in here. Alright, so 
So just to highlight and darken some of those areas, let's see, I have this um, gold. And we'll just put a little bit of highlights in the... Oh, that's not bright enough. Let's see. They're not, it's not smooth, so I could do little scribbles, actually. Sharpen it. So I have this little squiggly. Bit of sh shadow or highlight there. Um, let me put that other color. Oh. This is just brown, uh, dark umber. I'm just going to do a little bit of shadowing. in here show the top of the head and darker along here and in here That needs to be some red in there, I think. Right here above the eye. Just a smidge.
And okay, so I'm gonna dry that eye part. I love doing eyes. this umber color or I might need to go black no the umber is fine uh, just gets a little bit darker there and then the, need a real sharp point The separation of the beak is right about there. And then a white pencil. sharpened. Birds have this little light ring around their eye. I don't know if I can get that in or not. It's not bad. And then just a little dab of white paint or let's see for the highlight. And just take your white and you can put some um, white, uh, just spray of, of odd flyaway feather hairs or whatever you want to call them. Just to give it a little more poofiness. You can add whatever color you want to these. I've seen black and white ones. Uh, I've seen ones that are more on the red side. It's whatever you want to do. And maybe sienna color in the color pencil. Let's see if this one will work. Yep. Get dark in some areas if you want. around here. Get a little more sienna color. Depends how, you know, detailed you want. You want it simple? Go simple. Okay. So there's the chicken. Now I did have uh, nature's own right along here. You can put that in if you want or you can leave it. mark from the now I think it would probably look cool if you put um, something raised there uh, maybe a stenciled word or something oh welcome back Colleen um, I'm going to let that dry and then I'll probably stencil something in there and I'll post it when I on Instagram. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what I did with these rub-ons. <laughs> uh, let's see. My
Let me find my... I had one done already that I was going to show you. If I can find it. There's so much stuff out right now. It's really funny. Where? Where did I put that? Hmm. Put everything away and now I can't find anything. can't find one of my books um, but I can show you what I did on something else so what you can do With your laser printer, now I've done this with the jet, uh, inkjet printer also. The only problem with it is that you can't, you have to be very careful you don't smudge it. So if you're doing something right away, it would be great. Now say I did this and I wanted to print something, a sentiment or a word or, or whatever. And Now you need a soft gel to do this. Scissors. So you and you want sticker paper. So what you want to do is get some sticker paper. You know the the sticker back after you've used your stickers the the waste that you have. Um that's what it's this part so your stickers were on this and it's a shiny so you want that side to be printing onto the uh, the, the printer so what whichever side prints on your printer you'll have to figure that out so all you do like oh, let me bang this it's When you're doing words, you have to mirror the image or words that you're doing. Um, or it'll come up backwards. Now, I didn't think about doing that, so mine are going to be backwards when I put it down. And you want to take a big brush. And use this thick gel medium and put a good layer of it not too thick though because then it'll smear but you want it fairly even you don't want it uneven so here's my 
words, and this is on the sticker paper, and this is uh, laser jet. So I put the matte medium on there. Did I put enough? I think I did. And then you lay down your picture or your words. And then you take um, a credit card, something stiff, even a ruler, and burnish it really well. Hopefully I put enough wide enough. I did a whole sheet of this in one of my journals, which I can't find. I don't know if it's upstairs. Okay. Take your heat gun and give it a blast. Both sides. So it's fairly dry. You can leave it if you wanted to. Now all you have to do is pull it up. See, I didn't leave it long enough. It's still kind of wet. But you'll get your print on your paper. Now, I printed one on this uh, inkjet also. So let's put it on this one here. So we'll see what that. I don't know if I didn't try it with inkjet before. Uh, I did try it with um, what do you call it? Wax paper and it worked. It's just that you have to be very careful not to smudge. Now this is going to be backwards again because I didn't mirror it. But let's see what this does. See if I can find that. It looked really cool. And the trick is don't put too much gel on and not and also not enough. So it's kind of like the Goldilocks thing. So I wanted to at least try and uh, see what what both types of printers would do. So let's dry this. This is smudging, I can tell. enough but yeah this one smudges so this doesn't work okay so you're gonna have to do it on this paper how can you find or uh, <laughs> lose a whole journal One of the uh, member streams we did this 
um, transfer. And oh, here it is. This is all a transfer, this whole thing. So this one turned out good. Uh, you have to play around with your settings on your printer though. Um, I'm still playing with that. This one turned out really clear, but I've had a few problems with it being blotchy in other things. Better yet, how can you lose something you had in your hand? Oh, I've done that before. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, so this was all transferred, this whole thing. So if you have any drawings of, that you really like, or maybe you're downloading something, um, sayings or drawings of flowers or, or something you want to put in your work, this, I find, was the coolest way of doing it. And um, where I saw this was a, ch a new channel. He's fairly new. And he's an artist. And his I think his channel is called Yates Make Makes. So let me just hold on. Just hold on a minute. I'll get his uh, channel. Okay. Yeah, Yates Mates. Um, copy. And he does these. Here, I'll give you the his channel. He has the most awesome techniques you'll ever see. He's new, so check him out. He's from the UK. And uh, he does a lot of... Um, using of the jelly plate, uh, doing a bunch of um, like lithographs, printing plates, that type of thing too. Really an awesome guy to check out. And his videos are fairly short, so they're not really drawn out or anything. He doesn't do any lives, he only does videos. So check him out. Awesome. This is where I got this idea from. And he'll get right back to you if you have any questions. Now, so I have this. And this is what we did la this, this month. So we made this awesome little, it's a folded double accordion book. And there is no gluing and no sewing. It's all folded into, into each other, so it makes a book. I really love, loved it. I thought it was a very cool. I used scrapbook paper. You can use whatever paper you have. You can add more and more to it, so you can make it as thick or as skinny as you want, and they always lay flat. I just fell in love with this um, way of doing it. Uh, this is my fall drawings, ink drawings, I guess you could say. And I incorporated it so that it's cohesive into the next page. So they interlock through here. And each page also can be a pocket. So these are 
um, pockets. So you could put a pocket in there or leave it. Same with these. They're, they could be a pocket. So you can enhance and, and add to this as much as you want. So I'm going to do a bit of writing in here, maybe some more drawing, maybe add photographs. But I thought it was a really cool book and easy to do. And if you add things to it, it expands so you don't end up with a gator mouth opening. You can change the size also. Make it whatever size you want. And then you just add your front and back cover to it. Here's the one I did just with scrapbook paper, one sheet. So it's just a little one. So you could fix this up to however you wanted it. And then you just use these, this one and this one to adhere to your um, cover. Yeah, isn't it? And it's easy to do. It's super easy to do. So there's going to be a bunch of them I'm going to be doing um, for the next couple of months. And we'll be doing some theme books. So I just thought I'd show you those in case you're interested. And I, they're different. They're not something you see all the time. They're very different and they're so easy to make and no gluing and no sewing. So that I liked. Yeah, yeah, it was, there's all kinds. There's an, a really neat accordion one that I'm going to be doing too that really looks awesome. I have never seen those before. Like, yeah, I, I came across it on the internet and I thought, oh, wow. <laughs> so <laughs> I said, that's what I want. I can't remember her name now. She, what was it? I think she was she, she was from Australia. Her, it was a blog. Um, maybe I've got an instruction sheet here. Let's hold on. Uh, have it. Got it. It's um, instructions. It's called a double accordion. It's uh, it's called making and making and made books. Dot blogspot. Dot com. If you can see. Awesome, awesome. So next week we're going to be doing a scarecrow, I believe. Um, I'm not sure exactly how I want to do it, whether I just want to do the scarecrow itself or a scarecrow in a field. I'm still thinking about that. But I want to do a scarecrow for next month's... Um, art folder. So I guess I'll let you guys go and I hope you give this a try. Yeah, I love scarecrows. I could do something really scary too. <laughs> I like doing 
you know, crazy faces and stuff. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe I'll do some cute ones, too. I like creepy ones, though, for Halloween. <laughs> so let me know what you guys want me to do, and I'll uh, see what I can dream up. So leave uh, a comment, and then I can uh, look back on it again. So I'll let you guys go, and you have a fantastic weekend. Thanks, Janet. Yeah, it was fun to do. That would be really cute to do in watercolor, too. Or gouache. We could do it in gouache. There you go. So it is in the um, members uh, comments page if you want to download it. So I'll let you guys go, and you have a fantastic day, and we'll see you on Tuesday. Bye for now.